Good evening, friends, or morning, or wherever you are. It's Alexa again, and this is the first sort of first impressions for Cycle 2, right? I have played yesterday on launch. I played from into Cycle 2 from beginning as a new shaman, the Avalanche Shaman. And today I spent a bunch of hours on revisiting old builds in Legacy. This is in Legacy, obviously. <laughs> I did not manage to get to the Harbingers yet with my Cycle character, obviously. I'm not that fast. I killed a bunch of Harbingers already. Um, three of them. And so here's sort of the first impressions I got from the new patch so far. The first thing I noticed right away is that the game is much harder now than it was before. For the simple reason that, like, the power ceiling was pulled down heavily, right? Heavily. All the OP builds got nerfed. I wouldn't say into the ground, but they are way worse. Some old, some bad builds got buffed, like the Sorcerer and the Shaman and the Forge God. But really only to the level the other ones were before, right? So, and this is because, as they said many times before, that the, the game is balanced around 300 corruption, not more, not less. This is sort of the, the max. And you can really tell what was before maybe a thousand corruption for many builds is really now 300 is sort of the, the ceiling. I was playing 200 corruption with the Warlock, the Bleed Warlock. Was doing fine, but I could already tell it was struggling. And this build was killing tier 4 Jura before easily, right? Easily. So I don't even know if it can do the pinnacle boss. I think it can. We'll see. But you can definitely tell it is much harder. Now, I personally like that because I never liked the 1k corruption grind, which I think, think is just a waste of time. But there is one, one caveat to this. For new players, or like returning players, I should say, this might feel bad. If you had your insane... Like, you, you are used to a certain power level in this game, right? When you were playing before. Not the casual player who, who stops at the first monolith, but like people who were playing and actually grinding to a little bit of corruption. And you come back to the game now, and you guys don't do shit. The Rare Flood doesn't do damage. The Necromancer, this didn't even get changed much, but the enemies are much stronger, like the mobs are much heavier. You just die randomly to a Tundra Stalker running at you, as we saw with Rex, right? And Hardcore, for example, is really Hardcore now. It's really Hardcore. It's a really tough game on Hardcore now. Because it just happens that sometimes a regular mob in, a, in the campaign even is so strong, you just die to it right away. Unless you know exactly, just by glancing at it, what it's doing. Now we know that this happens in Diablo 4 as well, right? When the botcher charges at you and you don't even see him, for example. <laughs> but I just wanted to, to say this. this. I actually like it, but for returning players, this is a word of warning. The game is much harder. It is much harder now. One thing I don't like is the whole... I wouldn't say the whole corruption system. The whole corruption system is better. You get to higher corruption faster. But one thing that has annoyed me from 1.0 launch is the fact that you have to go through unimpaled monoliths, regardless of your character, regardless of how strong he is. That is such a waste of time. Now, yes, we do have the glyphs, right? These glyphs of envy now. But you only drop them at anything over 100 corruption, so it's useless in cycle. It's only good for legacy. And even then, it just feels like an unnecessary extra step that shouldn't be there in my eyes. Why not just give me the ability to go straight to the Empowered Monoliths? Like I have in Diablo 4 where I can choose my World Tier right away. If I want to, I can go straight to World Tier 4. I'm probably gonna die, but if I want to, I can do it. Why do I not have this, this freedom as a player to choose this myself? I don't understand this decision making, to be honest. I guess they have the reasons. I don't like it. I'm gonna be honest, I don't like that. Because if your build is super powerful, because you have twink items, right? And you have super strong like items and you know the build kicks, then you have to go through these non important monoliths where you just farm through anything and it's not no challenge, it does it's not fun, right? It's boring. There is no challenge from the enemies, you can just run through it, it's just something you have to grind to get to where you want to be finally. That's just this whole glyph of envy thing feels completely unnecessary to me. That's my experience with it. The pinnacle boss system I like a lot actually, with the harbingers that 
was a lot of fun so far. Extra killing these is pretty simple, actually. It's not really crazy. They are on the same power level as the bosses, I guess. Like the, the ones you kill anyway. Um, so that's that's cool. I like it. It's a nice addition to the end game. It's not crazy, right? But it, it is cool. I want to see how the pinnacle boss does. Nobody has killed him yet, so we don't know. But it's going to be interesting for sure. What I like a lot, actually, is the Nemesis system. The Nemesis system is really great. It plays nicely. It is great. It gives you some really good items. One thing I don't like is the fact that if I put an item in with the egg, that it doesn't give it LP. It can just give it any random affix, which will never be the one you want, right? There's so many affixes in the game. It will just put any bullshit on it you don't need. So that's just going to break my item. Instead, just give me a roll that it either gives it LP or it doesn't. Why that legendary thing? Um, whatever. So that's the only thing I don't like. But um, other than that, the Nemesis system is really cool. It's a lot of fun to engage with these and actually have the choice to empower them or challenge them. So that, that's a cool addition. Although I must say, in the in the campaign, I found them a lot. Nemesis guys. In the Echoes, not so much. I don't know if you actually have to farm the whole monolith to actually find one. Or like the whole Echo, rather. Um, because if I just go through it, as I usually do, just killing some, some dudes until the objective is displayed and then go to the objective and go to the next echo, I rarely found him. So that's a bit weird. Maybe that was just I was just unlucky, but that felt a bit weird in my eyes. But yeah, oh well. One thing that did great is the servers. They are fine. Then again, it's only on launch. There are only 80,000 players, according to Steam. Um, Steam DB. There was only 80,000 players live, max, last night, compared to the 260,000 on launch. I don't know if this means anything. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Maybe the hype was already killed because it didn't actually launch right away at 8 or 6 p.m. my time. Um, there was a delay. Not crazy. For some, it was apparently 40 minutes and maybe they lost interest already. I don't know. This is what someone in chat says. Maybe that's exaggerated. I don't know. Anyway, the servers are handling it just fine. There is no problem. You can play the game. There's a bunch of smaller bugs, but that's fine. Generally, you can play though. One thing I like a lot also is... I feel like the game looks better. I don't know if they updated textures. I didn't see anything in the patch notes. Definitely areas are different. Just check out the um, Reign of Dragons. If you kill the Emperor of Corpses, his entire area is completely new. Also, some echoes were reworked. They actually look much better. They have grass in it and actually objects in it, not just some flat terrain. So the game looks better, I think. I think the textures are better. Maybe maybe I'm smoking crack. I don't know, but it looks better in my eyes from, from what I've seen. Now, when it comes to one thing I wanted to mention is the MTX, right? I bought all the packages, um, all these supporter packs. I bought all of them, these ones. And these are not bad, right? By by no means. But you cannot compare this at all to like what Diablo is putting out, or even like um, Torchlight, I believe. These look great, but it's not on the same level. And I don't know why. I, for example, this one I don't like at all. This looks kind of weird, the Vanquisher. The other one is cool. This one, the Templar, that looks really cool. Um, but maybe that's just personal preference. They are not bad at all. I can I just kind of put my finger on it. What it is? It's just. Something I don't... Something Diablo just does better, for example. I don't know what it is, really. Maybe you know and tell me in the comments what Diablo does better with the cosmetics. Um, maybe, because I think this is actually also something that should put a little bit more effort on it, because this is also what keeps the game alive, right? I mean, it's just... The textures aren't even that good, if you look at it, right? This is just all very... I don't know. I don't know. There's some good ones, there's some bad ones. Yeah. They added a bunch of things, um, but it's not like super, super crazy, I don't think. This is... It's not really necessary for the gameplay, right? But it is necessary for the game to survive. The NTX have to be in the game. I think, also still think, the game needs a battle pass. I absolutely think this would be great for the game. People hate me when I say this, but I think it would help give players a progression of course you have to pay for it but that's like what 10 bucks you don't even have to pay for it if you do it like diablo you just get more rewards if you pay for it but it gives you an extra progression you go through just by playing the game um 
I like this a lot. I don't think it's a bad thing. You don't have to buy it. It's not necessary. But if you want it and if you are like me and you like cosmetics and visuals and beautiful things, then you want this. Anyway, gameplay wise, um, it's best to last. I would say the gameplay is still great as it was before. I think it's still one of the best RPGs on the market, if not the best. Um, because the gameplay is a lot of fun. The builds now feel, it feels now that way more builds are viable in Empower timelines, but way less builds are super strong. But there are also way more builds viable in general. So that just is a lot of fun for me because that's what I do. I just respec all the time. I cannot grind the same build forever. I have to respec them, otherwise I get bored to shit. So I like this a lot. I think this is actually good. Also, what I like a lot, what they did with this with this um, patch is that they put void damage on all the items, on, all these, on many items. So there's a lot of void damage possibilities. I actually have, I think, 25 builds planned I want to look into with the new items. Like there's a void, void lightning damage rogue, right? There's a cold void item, but there's a lot of cool combinations. I hope you can actually make them viable because in 1.0, as you all know, if you were mixing damage types like fire and, I don't know, cold, for example, it usually was worse than if you would just go with one because obviously you have to set up your items to watch them damage types. And if you go with just fire, it's better than fire and cold. I hope we can make them viable in 1.1. I don't know if we can. I will have to test this over the next week. I have weeks. I have a lot to do for this. A lot of builds I want to run. And we're gone. So overall, to bring it all back around. Overall, I'm super satisfied. I think it's going in the right direction. I am, however, a bit concerned that some people will hate the fact that they lost a lot of power. Nobody likes losing power, especially when they are playing. Usually you want to gain more power with things to do, but we'll see how this pans out. Um... The reception is overall very good. Everyone in chat and Discord I see is very happy with, with the build as it is. So I think we're on the right path. We'll see if I'm correct. But this, these were my first impressions after, I guess, one and a half days. It was like 12 hours or something overall I played. And um, with different things on Cycle and Legacy. So it's going in the right direction. We're not there yet, as I said before. The core game will be finished with 1.4 right in like nine months or something 10 months then the core game will be finished that's exactly where diablo 4 is in season 4 right now when the core game was finished this is how it is these days <laughs> we have to live with it until then you can play the the pre-finished game i guess and before that you will also not get any new content in that sense right like cycle specific content so yeah anyway i like it let me let me know what you think of it in the comments how are you enjoying it or not what do you hate what do you like tell me below how the new season feels for you so far and i will see you in the next video